I made a video at the beginning of last week about the the brinksmanship that Starmer was getting involved in with with Macron. When you when you look at Starmer and you look into his eyes, there's nothing there. There's no emotion. There's no compassion. No empathy. And this is the sort of guy that you'd expect to play Russian roulette with everybody's life. And that's exactly what him and Sleepy Joe and no doubt Macron will jump into very very quickly. And I think we've got to realise that unexpected consequences from foolish actions actions can have catastrophic consequences. And I think that's what we're looking at at the minute. We're looking at a scenario where is it out of hatred for Trump that Biden would push the West towards nuclear war? Well, of course, Biden's probably not making the decisions anyway. Who is making the decisions? We don't really know. Could it be what some of these psychopathic left-wing nutcases that hate Western civilization so much they've decided they're actually going to push and do everything they can to destroy it? We're in a very, very dangerous situation. One of Putin's spokesmen just said, by the looks of things, we could be, ha we could be in a nuclear war by Christmas. If we're in a nuclear war by Christmas, 2025 isn't happening. That's the reality of the situation. I hope, I've made quite a few videos about the, the subjects in nuclear war. I hope I'm wrong about the threat that we face. I genuinely mean that. I genuinely mean that. But the, the problem is, it's not a question of being right or wrong. If I'm right, then every single one of us watching this video, me speaking on this video, could be dead in a very, very short space of time. If there's a full on nuclear war, the, ca the, the casualty rates are absolutely horrendous. We're talking billions of deaths. It, it, it's unimaginable. It's, un it's like nothing that has ever happened in history in terms of death, destruction and mayhem. Because the first thing that happens when, when, when a full nuclear war happens, and I, I suggest anybody Anybody that reads, anybody that wants to listen to audiobooks, it's on Audible as well as as well as a uh, a printed book. I was in, I think I said this before, I was in, in uh, Belfast International Airport about two months ago, and one book jumped out on the shelves in W. H. Smiths, just called "Nuclear War: A Scenario" by Annie Jacobson, and I would suggest that every single person watching this video tries to get a copy. Now, as long as you, as long as you're not manically depressed but i suggest that everybody tries to get a copy in fact i when i read it i was quite depressed it actually cheered me up quite a lot because i thought well maybe things aren't as bad in my life you know compared to what could happen if there was one of these nuclear nuclear catastrophes and basically i'll, I'll, I'll not give the, the 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 whole story away it's a great book it's a it's obviously fiction but it's based on fact in terms of the research is impeccable talks about all the different scenarios it talks about what happens if certain countries launch nukes at each other and so on and so forth it talks about the breakdown in communication between russia and the west and how dangerous that is and and the scenario is so realistic now who'd have thought a year ago that we'd have had north korean soldiers fighting in eastern europe fighting in a war in eastern europe because that does bring the rocket man from north korea into the into the scenario and in the book by annie jacobson it starts with a nuclear intercontinental ballistic missile launched from North Korea hitting Washington DC. And the carnage is absolutely catastrophic. And then from there, it unravels and unfolds into something even more horrendous than one hydrogen bomb exploding over Washington DC, over the capital, and, and just destroying everything. That's how, the, that's, how the, that's how the book starts. But when we think about how those things happen, how do, how do wars start, how do fights start? Quite a lot of it's down to paranoia. Quite a lot of it's down to not communicating. One of the worst things in life is not communicating with people. That's why the internet and, and, and WhatsApp and Facebook and all these little chat things where people start shouting at each other are so dangerous. A few years ago in, in Northern Ireland, there was a, a man shot dead in the town where I live over a spat that started on Facebook and somebody ended up dead, apparently, allegedly, that's, that's what happened. 
So consequences of not communicating, not talking and paranoia can be horrendous. And when you look at what's happening in Ukraine, put, even putting aside the escalation that Biden has just signed off on, if you look at what's been happening and you really read between the lines, you realise that people and people in Western governments are not interested in doing a deal. They're not interested in negotiating. They think they're going to beat Russia. They think they're going to get Putin out of power. And people need to really seriously think, is that a good idea? One, if you get rid of Putin, who, who replaced him? Because there's loads of fanatics in Russia. Putin is certainly an evil man. He certainly... Is he psychopathic? Who knows? He's not a good man. And what he's done in Ukraine is absolutely horrendous and wrong. And what he's done in, in other parts of the world has been horrendous and wrong. Having said that, he did pretty well fighting ISIS. That's another story. But the reality of the situation is, if Putin feels like his life is in danger, what is to stop him launching nuclear weapons at the West? And it's totally unnecessary because the reality is, firing storm shadow missiles and these long range American missiles into Russia is not going to win the war in Ukraine. All it's gonna do is poke the bear. And it's almost like it's been done deliberately to scupper any chances that, that, um, that Trump had of doing a deal. Because there's a deal to be had there, whether people like it or not. People can live in the fantasy land that Russia's gonna give all this land back and it's gonna be pushed back to its own borders. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Ukraine don't have the manpower, Russia don't have the manpower. You're sitting in a stalemate and those lines that are very similar probably to what happened in, in North and South Korea. There needs to be a DMZ, a demilitarized zone. There needs to be a protected border. And one half of Ukraine, or whatever it is, or two thirds of Ukraine needs to come into the fold of NATO or something similar so it can't be attacked by Russia again. And unfortunately, the, the Russian, supposedly Russian part of Ukraine is gonna be swallowed up by Russia. That's what's gonna happen if we don't end up in a thermonuclear war where everybody dies. So none of, these, none of these outcomes are positive. But the truth of the matter is, as much as I think what Putin's done is vile and disgusting, do I want my family and all my children and my children's children for a hundred generation, 100 generations to be wiped out and killed because of a, a spat between two corrupt nations? on the outskirts of Europe. Let's get it right. Ukraine is an extremely corrupt nation. Do I believe they have the right to defend themselves? Absolutely. Do I believe the West has the right to stupidly pour petrol on the fire and provoke possibly a nuclear response from Russia? No, I don't believe that. What should be happening in Ukraine is, a, is an insurgency and a very high tempo insurgency. That would do more harm and damage Russian morale far more than firing a few cruise missiles into Russia. When, when Putin has said time and time again, that's his red line. And again, Putin can be backed into a corner on this because if he doesn't respond and he doesn't attack Western assets, he's gonna be in a position where he's seen to be weak by his own country. So we're playing a very dangerous high stakes game. And that's without even having the possibility of an accidental nuclear holocaust which has nearly happened on numerous occasions. When I was a kid, two or three times, the nukes were about to be launched and it was firing Dales up in the York Moors managed to, to stop that happening. The consequences of a nuclear war are absolutely obscene. Depending on which scenario you look at, it could be a billion people, it could be four or five billion, it could be six billion. The whole of Western civilization would be destroyed. Possibly people in Argentina could survive, but I'm guessing that they'll probably be targeted as well. Um, people say Australia and New Zealand will be safe. Well, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure that any Western allies would, allies would be safe. So we're living in a scenario where within a day, if things go badly wrong, we could all be dead. I want you to think about that. Within 24 hours, on any given day, if things go badly wrong between Ukraine and Russia, we could all be dead if things escalate. So to me, 
Trump has exactly the right idea. Trump is the only one that's talking about a peace process. Trump is the only one that has a plan of how to de-escalate this and stop this war happening. And that's the question. Is Trump even going to get the chance to do that with these maniacs? Putin. Biden. Starmer. Macron. Rocket Man. It's, getting, it's, it's coming to something when probably the most sensible person in the room is the Chinese president. And believe you me, anybody that's heard me talk before, I am no fan of the Chinese government and the Chinese Communist Party. Probably, to me, one of the most corrupting influences on the planet. But he's seeming like a, a moderating force at the minute. Isn't it? The global civilization, Western civilization being destroyed is not good for, for business in China. Let's just put it that way. Does that mean it won't happen? No, it doesn't. Because it's the unintended consequences. It's the accidental misrepresentation or misapprehension of what's happening. It's the cruise missile that hits a school or hits a hospital that causes the problems. And missiles can go wrong, as we know. So we're living in dangerous days. What I, I mean, what do we do? I mean, we pray. Uh, you know, when, when Trump got to power, I thought, well, thank goodness. I mean, surely Biden can't now sign off on these missiles. And he's done it. What a vindictive, bitter, twisted old man. An angry, bitter, twisted old man. A parody of himself. That's what Biden is. A parody of himself. And he should just go. He should just leave the scene. But that's what we're facing, guys. Potential nuclear war. So if you're a praying kind of person, it's probably a good idea to pray. And it's probably a good idea to get right with God as well. Because we're in a very, very dangerous situation. And... Uh, I know this is a very depressing and grim video, but all we can do is pray at the minute. We have no power. We can't influence these events. All we can do is stand on the sidelines and watch as our lives are put in danger. Once Trump gets into power, then we need to start calling Starmer to account because this man is a dangerous, dangerous man. Macron's dangerous. Biden's dangerous because he's completely demented. His brain has melted. So guys, get the book by Annie Jacobson. Nuclear war, a scenario, and you'll find out that what we're living through at the minute is almost right out of the pages of that very, very dark and scary book. See you all soon.